No matter how many printers we tested or reviewed, there is always the same thrill of excitement when you get a brand new box with a printer inside. So today I will be very excited to test this Ender 7 Bike Reality that we just received. A printer that a lot of you have been waiting for, mainly because it is supposed to be very fast. It is supposed to be a game changer in terms of fast FDM 3D printing with up to 250 millimeters per second. So we're gonna test that and yeah, Without further ado, let's open it up, let's see what's inside. Like with every other Creality machine, we receive a nice box with accessories and all the important tools. There is also a manual and of course a filament spool to get you started. After opening the box, you can already see how well made this machine is. Creality has evolved into a solid manufacturer selling finished products. Many parts are injection molded and the overall quality of used components feels much better. The whole printer is delivered semi-assembled. All the main components are built into modules, so you basically have only few parts to fit together. Alright, we have everything on the table, we are ready to start the assembly. It looks very neat and easy to assemble, so everyone should be fine assembling it at home. We have actually only three connectors to, to connect and total of six components to assemble, so uh, yeah, shouldn't take much time. I will put a timer somewhere here in the corner of the video so we can check how much time it actually takes for me to assemble. That, uh, that would be interesting. All right, so uh, let's, let's get it started. I have managed to assemble the machine in about 30 minutes. It would probably be a lot quicker, but it turns out that I am really bad at following manuals and I had to redo a few steps. The printer looks really nice and clean, just a really well thought and finished product. On the build platform we have a glass plate with special coating that helps with adhesion, similar to Ultrabase that Creality has been using for a while now. The cable management is really neat. We only had to plug in three connectors and they are all well hidden. I like those white cable clips that fit snugly in the profile space. Heated bed cable is also well made. Printer is equipped with filament runout sensor and a double geared extruder. Creality also decided to use bigger stepper motors to provide more torque and power during high speed printing. Okay guys, our Ender 7 is finally fully assembled, so we can start off by doing some calibration and leveling on it. The first thing I want to check is the Z-axis and to be more specific, the V-slot wheels on the Z-axis. I have a feeling that they might need some adjustment like they usually do. And after that we can move to the bed leveling and do a manual bed leveling because this printer does not have any kind of automatic bed leveling solution. Even though on this particular printer everything was really nicely adjusted, I have loosened the wheels on purpose just to show you how important this step is. Here you can see how unstable everything is when the wheels are not adjusted. This printer uses wheels that are sort of grabbing the profile from both sides, allowing the printer to make smooth straight movements. 
If the distance between one side and another is too big, there will be a gap between the profile and the wheel allowing it to wiggle. That's where the eccentric nuts come in handy. By adjusting them, you move one of the wheels closer or further away from the profile. It's an easy procedure that will save you a lot of failed prints and improve the printing quality on any printer with this type of solution. Make sure to set it just right as over tightened wheels might cause a lot of friction and wear them off faster. I usually aim for the tension that allows you to spin the wheels quite freely without any wiggle between the profile. Now let's do the bed leveling. Always start leveling by preheating the machine to minimize any thermal expansions differences and to make sure that you don't have any type of filament leftovers on the nozzle that will affect your final nozzle to platform distance. Like I mentioned before, the Ender 7 does not have any type of automatic bed leveling. Some people might find it as a slight disadvantage, but personally I believe that manual leveling might be more reliable and easier to adjust on the go once you learn how to do it properly. It is of course all a matter of preference, and I am sure that soon there will be options to add leveling sensors to the machine. Having a well leveled bed and a simple end stop is much more reliable, and if done properly will last for months of continuous printing. I'm not gonna be super detailed about what I'm doing here as thousands of people already posted a tutorial videos on YouTube on how to do the bed leveling correctly. Ender 7 is no different in this matter than other printers so let's just make sure that each corner is on the same level by using a piece of paper and we will be good to go. I always like to test how the experience would be for a potential customer so let's use the white PLA that was included with the printer and the bunny G code that I found on the SD card. If you are a 3D printer user, you probably had many failed prints in your past. This particular print was going really well for almost 6 hours before it failed. I am not exactly sure why that happened, but the filament unwidened itself and got tangled on the spool holder. I could see it happening on a new spool right after start, but not more than few hours into a print. Anyway, the print looks really nicer than that. I have printed another one right after and that turned out perfect. Okay guys, I had the printer for about a week now, so I can finally share some thoughts about it with you. And uh, generally speaking, it was a very pleasant experience. It has few issues that, um, that I find slightly annoying, but uh, in general, it's a really good machine. You might have noticed that I was struggling a little bit in this video when I was trying to show you what is happening inside the printer, like during those time lapses and uh, the first layers that I wanted to catch on camera. Uh, that is something that was already mentioned by Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and it's all because of this big black piece of plastic on top of the frame. It's blocking a lot of the view, so uh, it's quite difficult to look inside of the printer, especially with a camera. I wouldn't say it's a big design flaw, I would say that it's quite annoying, but definitely something you can get used to. The good thing about this machine is the assembly. I think that there is pretty much no room to, to make an error, like it's almost impossible. Uh, all the connectors are different and there are only three of them, so just plug them in. And the total of six modules were also easy to assemble. Uh, it took me like 30 minutes and I think anyone who would order this machine would be absolutely fine assembling it. I also want to talk a bit about build quality. The materials used are really high quality and the whole printer is designed really well so everything is stable and sturdy. I like that they use slightly larger stepper motors that will provide this much needed torque and power to the X and Y axis and extruder as well. The extruder itself is a double geared extruder. We have also a filament sensor here which I had an opportunity to test by mistake and it worked really well. The machine has also very efficient filament cooling system 
So those benches were printed quite fast and all the overhangs are looking really well. Ender 7 is also equipped with linear rails on X and Y axis. That together with Core XY gantry makes it very sturdy and guarantees high quality even when printing with those higher speeds. So the question here is, is this printer worth the price? Well, I would say yes. Both if you're looking for a good quality, sturdy 3D printer and also if you're looking for high speed 3D printing. However, you need to remember that the speed is not the only thing that affects our printing time. I have sliced two benches into G-codes and only changed the speed between them. The first one is supposed to be printing with 100 mm per second and the estimated printing time is 1 hour 26 minutes. The second one was sliced with 250 mm per second and the printing time is 1 hour 18 minutes. So basically we saved only 8 minutes by increasing the speed by more than 2 times. The thing that is really slowing us down is acceleration. Just like a car, the printer needs a specific amount of time to reach certain speed, it does not happen instantly. And with models like 3D Benchy, the distance between one point and another is so small that the printer almost never reaches its top speed. Let's upload our 100 mm per second Benchy into G-Code Analyzer to take a closer look. Red lines are indicating printing with 100 mm per second, which is our target speed here. G-Code Analyzer gives us some useful data like the actual print time and average speed. In our case, the average speed is slightly above 37 mm per second. We also see that the printer spent 53% of time accelerating and only 47% printing at the target speed. For the 250 mm per second, the acceleration makes even bigger difference. You can see that the top speed is reached only for a fraction of a second somewhere in the middle of infill before it has to break. This gives us an average speed of 44 mm per second, but the target speed was reached only during 15% of the print. So the true benefits of high-speed printing will not be that visible on smaller models. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you really enjoyed it. If you have any questions or tips for us, please let us know as we have just started with this series, so we would really appreciate your feedback.